Happy Monday, everybody. I'm Dr. Gregory, and you're watching Dr. Gregory's Meta Moments. This is episode 47. I was away in Park City snowboarding, which is why I delayed the Meta Moments for a day, but I didn't forget about you guys. I really am excited to finish this uh, short summary of the book called Don't Overthink It by Ann Bogle. I've gotten a lot of great feedback about it because people can absolutely relate to the concept of overthinking. So let's get going, okay? Needing to choose between two good options can lead to overthinking. Taking action in order to move forward is the best choice. We all wanna make good decisions in life and we may automatically slow down when facing a big decision because we wanna make sure we're taking it seriously. And that makes sense. Purposeful waiting does have a place. There are times when slow methodical decisions are necessary. So let's say you're trying to deal with a difficult family member or whether you should go back to school or afford to buy a house, then time may be exactly what you need. But at a certain point, waiting time be does become wasted time. We think slowly, moving slowly will help us, but then we spend so much time considering our options, we get stuck in this analysis paralysis. And we need to remember that important doesn't necessarily require slow. There comes a point when a decision doesn't need any more thought and past this point, we're overthinking it. We don't need to keep pondering. We need to speed up and make a decision and take some actions. When we're facing two good options, we don't need more time. We need to move on. So don't, don't beat yourself up, basically. Sometimes we slow down because while we have moved forward externally, we haven't moved forward mentally or emotionally, and it may look like we've sped up, but we're actually just wobbling inside. We know we need to move forward, and we must do it with our whole selves, body and soul. Don't wallow, don't wobble, move on. Okay, so you can make only so many decisions in a day. Look for ways to clear your mental clutter. Ooh, this is very interesting. Each decision we make throughout the day takes a toll on our finite amount of mental energy, what to have for breakfast, which route to take for work, what, how to handle a tricky conversation, whether to buy new jeans, how our child will get home from practice on Friday. Each decision does require a bit of brain power, but the cumulative effect is large. The more choices we encounter, the more likely we are to, dis to succumb to decision fatigue. So this is a state where we become exhausted from making a decision after decision and our ability to choose breaks down. Unless we're on guard, we may not consciously notice that decision fatigue is creeping in. When we're physically tired, when we know it, we can tell we're short on sleep or worn out from a hard work workout because we can feel it in our bodies. But decision fatigue can be very sneaky. Instead of feeling specifically tired in a certain way, we just feel overwhelmed. Wow, this is a really interesting concept. Okay, how can we overcome this? To avoid decision fatigue, it helps to think out of our mental energy as we would a budget and more aptly per diem. We can't make decision after decision without, decision without paying a price. So the more decisions we make in a day, the worse the quality of our decisions will be over time. Wow, that's very interesting. Our mental capacity to tackle them erodes and we start to overthink. overthink. And conversely, the more we, decisions we eliminate, the longer we'll retain our decision making capacity throughout the day. Strategies to streamline decisions. Okay, I'm waiting to hear this one because I want to know too. Let's explore. Eat the same thing. Okay. It's remarkable how many decisions we face every day about food and meal times play a huge role in our rhythms of life. So we streamline these things and we'll save big. Number one, adopt a, or adopt a signature dish. This is a reliable recipe you're always to prepare to make for friends and that way you don't have to spend your mental energy deciding what to serve. You don't have to worry about choosing or how to execute a new recipe when guests come over. Instead, you can fall onto your regular routine, at least as far as the food is concerned and focus on your friends. Limit yourself to one time. So if you find yourself constantly thinking about how to fit something into your schedule or when to fit it in, limit your options by establishing a set time uh, a set time can help. Committing a set time is hard for some people, but once that time is set, you don't have to think about it anymore. I've actually done this, actually in bed, because again, you get a lot of analysis paralysis while you're either trying to fall back asleep or you're just trying to fall asleep for the night. And I've realized that. I said, I can't do, I say that to myself, I can't do anything about this right now. I know I have to make a decision about it. So I create a mental note saying, this is a decision I need to make in the morning when I wake up. It almost always works out. Instead of perseverating about it over and over again, I recognize the fact that there is nothing I can do about it at the moment in bed. I am safe and sound in my own home and it's time to relax and appreciate my restful sleep. 
So that's one piece of advice I can give you all. Limit technology creeps. Ooh, interesting. We can't talk about limiting our options without talking about smartly managing our relationship with technology because if we're not careful, our handy little devices can take our lives. So even if that's exactly what we don't want, and every time, even if that's exactly what we don't want, every time they do, we will need to decide to say yes or no. So limit the constant recurring decisions by setting smart guidelines now. Are you constantly asking yourself if now would be a good time to pull your, out your device? Consider implementing device-free zones in your life, a physical space and or set time when you actually put your device away completely. Did you know our digital devices can do us a world of good, but they also can encourage decision fatigue. Be smart about how you engage, lest your device become the boss of you instead of the other way around. This is extremely helpful. Um, I didn't even think about it that way, but you realize how, much dis how many decisions you make even just using your device and how that can become clutter mind cluttering as well. So I like this content, uh, this um, plan, but honestly, I'm gonna add to it. Let's go back to the concept of meditation. This can absolutely help with the decision fatigue because again, your intention is to be in a spot, space of mindfulness where you are, are thinking maybe actively, but you remember that, that you're meditating at the same time. So you train yourself to eventually let the thoughts go quicker and quicker and quicker and go into a space in a quantum space, if you will, of restfulness, whether it's um, gamma brain waves, which are extremely amazing during meditation, or alpha brain waves. Anything, the reason I know anything about these brain waves during meditation is because I happen to use a really helpful tool for meditation called Muse. And it's a headband that I wrap on my forehead and it um, um, actually tracks the signals of my brain from right near my ear and my forehead. And it will tell you whether or not you are in a meditative state or if you're in more in an alert state. And it actually scores the quality of your meditation uh, over the course of time. And how it does that is by giving you sound signals. So you can choose a background sound. It could be fireplace, it could be beach, it could be river, thunderstorm. And those sounds get louder and louder when your brain is in the active state. And when you're in the more meditative state, meaning in a gamma or alpha wave brain state, then the, the muse starts getting quieter and quieter and you actually hear birds chirping in the background. So the number of birds you hear is co co coincides with the amount of meditative state you've stayed in for that time frame that you've selected. Okay, so let's keep going. Muse, it's amazing. When things beyond our control inevitably happen, we tend to change course and we, we need to change course and we have to do it fast. Some of us seek opportunities to be spontaneous and go off script while others have a plan for every minute of their day. Whether we're go with the flow by nature or preferably a carefully crafted routine, life can force us to improvise. Things beyond our control inevitably happen and the sitter cancels, the rain necessitates a change of plans, the power goes out and we have to pivot in the moment. Making the best of the situation, we have to change course and we have to do it fast. Why not seize the pleasure at once? How often is happiness destroyed by preparation, foolish preparation? Quote from Jane Austen. I love that. In fact, that comes from a source of expectation, doesn't it? And that was something I struggled with most of my life and I still do to a degree, is when I set too much importance or focus on an expectation, I used to be destroyed by it when it wouldn't happen or come to fruition in the way that I had quote expected. So I've really worked on that. In fact, it's been my focus on a daily basis to work on my adaptability in life in general, to be able to go roll with the punches, go with the flow and understand that schedules change all the time, which is absolutely the case when you run your own business. Okay, moments when things go sideways often feel like something we have to survive. Any kind of time sensitive situation where we have to make a choice right now is ripe for overthinking and decision paralysis. We can't pre prepare for every situation. We can plan for things going awry as they certainly will. And an unexpected turn of events may throw us into a momentary disarray. But if we push through it, this messy middle of renegotiating our decisions, we can find joy on the other side. And the trick is knowing how to get there. I've absolutely done that. I've made plans for something and they did not work out the way they were. And usually it was something social, let's say. They did not work out the way they, we had planned. But suddenly we made an ultimate decision that sounded really good at the moment and we had a much better time with that uh, spontaneous decision than we ever would have with the planned one. 
So when it's clear a decision is needed to move forward, the worst thing we can do is not act. Keep going. Make a choice, any choice. It's better than staying stuck debating the options. Just pick something, anything. Pick something that feels better. Pick something that doesn't make you hesitate. It's better than doing nothing. And besides, things that don't unfold according to plan often make the best memories. Again, absolutely. Miracles don't happen in your known world. They happen in the unknown. So when you embrace your future with love and faith and not fear and doubt, you are embracing the possibility of miracles happening. You are embracing the possibility of joyous creation, joyous manifestation. So embrace the unknown. I promise it'll bring you more than you would ever have thought you could it could bring you. So go with it. Lean in and expect good things. I love that. Our perspective impacts how well we deal with the situation at hand. And when we perceive the stakes to be really high, we're more likely to freeze, especially if we're prone to perfectionism. So when spontaneity strikes, it's helpful to purposefully adopt a low stakes mindset. Stop, strive to choose, don't strive to choose that ideal option. We can choose a good one and remind ourselves that the best memories come from when something starts with going wrong. Seriously. Go with that perception. It's really about your perspective. Instead of becoming devastated and withdrawn and frustrated and resentful that it didn't work out the way you had hoped, really you're just creating that future then. You're creating that experience of that sucks. I hate it and I'm gonna resist this moment and consist, continue to resist it because guess what resistance does? It breeds persistence. So you're really not fixing anything. One of the ways to do this is by planning to meet deadlines early and knowing full well that things may go wrong and schedules can be disrupted. When we're prepared, we can seize opportunities as they present themselves and they can, whether they, when they're thrust upon us. So like showing up at the airport early, that's happened to me a few times where things could have gone awry. Like yesterday, we were sitting at the wrong gate, but we were so early, about an hour and a half in, I looked up at the gate and realized it wasn't heading to Phoenix, our hometown. <laughs> We were about 45 minutes away from the plane taking off. Thank God I had noticed in that time frame, And we walked to the gate calmly as we were not in a rush and were able to make our plane without a problem. Because trust me, that had happened to me once before where we literally ignored the fact that we were at the wrong gate and missed the plane. Did you know when faced with an unexpected moment of decision, it's easy to freeze? To get to the other side where the good stuff is, you have to enter into the messy middle of uncertainty and indecision and then the joy will be at the end. The only way out is through. So the conclusion is, when we don't recognize our overthinking behavior for what it is, it's impossible to get over it. I love that. Because again, when I started reading parts of this chapter to you guys, I realized that some things, including using technology, can be a source of overthinking. As long as we rely on decision-making styles that encourage overthinking, we're gonna spend a lot of time overthinking. Once we see what's really going on, we will begin to change. So awareness is always the first step. It will feel like a battle at first, and we've been analyzing things to death our whole lives, but with time, it will feel like, like a habit and a good one. So describe yourself differently. Try that. Describe yourself differently. Here are some suggestions. The way we see ourselves has enormous implications for how we live our lives. Stop describing yourself as a chronic overthinker, rather as someone who is capable of experiencing less decision angst and more joy and peace, someone who can learn to make confident, confident decisions, someone who doesn't need to habitually second guess themselves, someone who is learning how to filter out the unimportant, unhealthy and unhelpful, someone who is developing strategies for stopping overthinking in its tracks, someone who is becoming equipped to gracefully pivot when things don't go as planned, and lastly, someone who can put overthinking aside to welcome good things into their lives. And Bottom line is, you can do this. It starts with awareness and the words I am are extremely important. That is how you perceive yourself. And what follows after that is also extremely important. Thanks for watching everybody. This was episode, I think 47 of Metamonuments. Love you guys. Happy Monday.